almost every PHP developer has ever scraped something from the web. Often we need some data, which is available only on the website, and we want to pull this data and save it somewhere. It's nice when a website provides its own public API. But often such API has rate limits, or there is no API at all. In this case, we need to manually open a browser, walk through the links and copy the data that we need. The scraper is the thing that automates these steps via the script. In this series of screencasts, we are going to scrape images from pexels.com. This website provides high-quality and completely free stock photos. They have a public API, but it has a limit of 200 requests per hour. Our task will be to scrape images of cats. We need to store an image and some information about it, like title, text and resolution. So let's start. In order to make asynchronous HTTP requests, we use a client called BuzzReact. Move to installation and copy composer require. Paste it here. The main advantage of using asynchronous PHP in web scraping is that we can make a lot of work in less time. Instead of querying each web page one by one and waiting for responses, we can request as many pages as we want at once. Thus, we can start processing the results as soon as they arrive. The library is installed and we can start making HTTP requests. Let's request any image on pexels.com. Select this one and copy URL. Paste it here as a comment. Well, the first thing we need to do is to create an event loop. Then create an instance of the browser. This object is responsible for performing concurrent HTTP requests. To perform a GET request, we call method GET and provide a URL. This method returns a promise that resolves with an instance of PSR7 response object. Input class name here. Now let's print the contents of the response body and run the loop. Done. Open the console and run the script. Here we can see HTML code of the requested page. The client works asynchronously. That means that we can easily request several pages and these requests will be performed concurrently. So, the whole process of scraping is very simple. Make a request and receive a promise. Add a fulfillment handler to the promise. Inside the handler, traverse the response and extract the required data. The page that we want to scrape doesn't require any authorization. If we look at the source code of the page, we can see that all data that we need is already available inside HTML. The task is very simple. No authorization, no form submissions and no AJAX calls. As soon as we have received the response, we are ready to start traversing the DOM. To extract data from HTML source code, we will use Symfony DOM crawler component. Here is Composer installation. Copy it and install. CSS selector component allows us to use jQuery-like selectors to traverse the DOM with the DOM crawler. We also install it. Well, to start extracting information from the response, we need to create an instance of the crawler. Its constructor accepts HTML string. Inside the fulfillment handler of the promise, we create an instance of the crawler and pass it a response body as a string. Now we can start using jQuery-like selectors to extract the required data from HTML. So, here is the page we want to scrape. We need ID of the image, its title, tags, resolution and URL to the source. Let's see where is the title. It is located inside tag h1 with class box title. Let's check. 
And yes, we have a title here. The list of tags is located inside the unordered list with classes list inline and list padding. Let's build a CSS selector for tags. List with classes and then a link. And resolution is here in details block. The first div with class icon list and div with class icon list title inside of it. Again, let's check the first div and the second one. And the most important part ID and the path to an image. Let's see. We have free download button here. It contains a link with URL that we need. So it means that we need to fetch this div with these classes and then a link inside of it. Let's see. div with classes and a link. Yes, here is our link. And ID of the image is here, inside data ID attribute. That's it. Now we have all the required CSS paths. And let's extract this data from the received HTML. Title. Method filter is used to find an element in the DOM. Then we extract text from this element. Then text. Again, we filter the DOM with a CSS selector. Copy it from here and paste. Method extract is used to extract attribute or node values from the list of nodes. Here, special attribute underscore text represents a node value. The resolution is also taken as a text value from the corresponding tag. Filter the DOM with this selector and call method text. Now we grab an element from the DOM. It is a link to an image. Copy this, paste. To get a path to an image, we use method adder and request href attribute. The same code we can use to extract an ID of the image. Let's collect an array and print all extracted data to prove that the scraper actually works. Title, tags, resolution, source and ID. Open the console and let's run the script. The output contains the title, an array of tags, resolution, a source of the image and ID. Ok, this code works. Now let's extract a class so we can reuse this logic for different pages. Create a new folder src and a new class inside. Called scraper namespace async scraper. So, it has a dependency on the browser. Initialize property and remove some lines. The public interface will be very simple and consists of one method scrape. It will return a promise that resolves with an array of scraped data. Loop through past URLs. For each URL we make a request. And once the response is received, we extract data from it. Create a method. Fix arguments. And copy this logic here. Paste it. Input class, fix crawler constructor and remove comments. Instead of using so-called array-driven development and passing around arrays, let's create a DTO object for the scrape data. Here inside SOC folder create a new class called image. It contains an ID, a title, a resolution, a source and a list of tags. We create a constructor and add type hints.
initialize properties and make all properties public. Now move back to our scraper. Instead of array, let's return an image object. Pass ID, title, resolution, source and text. Add return type for a method. And here in scrape method we need to collect these promises. So let's replace for each with array map function. It has a callback with URL. Copy everything here, remove for each and paste inside the callback. Add return statement. And let's extract method here. It's hard to follow these nested return statements. For example, this extract from URL. Create method and paste the code. We want to return a promise that resolves once all requests are done and all data is scraped. How we can implement this? We can use all function and provide an array of our promises. This function returns a promise that will resolve only once all specified promises in this array have been resolved. The resolution value of the returned promise will be an array containing resolution values of underlined promises. Before we start using the scraper, we need to make changes in Composer JSON file. Add auto load section and specify a directory with a corresponding namespace. In our case, it is a sync scraper. Then update Composer auto loader. OK, we are ready to test the scraper. New file index.php Require Composer auto loader. Create a loop, then create a browser. Create a scraper and inject a browser. Specify a list of URLs to scrape and pass them into scrape method. Method returns a promise, so we can attach a handler to it and just print the result. Run the loop. Let's try. Here we have two image objects. The required data has been scraped. In the next episode, we will store these results in MySQL database.